OK, so we finished the last lesson with an exercise involving crotchets and crotchet rests. In this session, we'll add two new notes to your arsenal, a minim and a quaver. Let's see how they relate to the crotchet. So we already know the crotchet worth one beat. If you double its length, it becomes a minim worth a count of two. With wind instruments, the length of a note determines how long the player must hold the note on for. But in drumming, of course, a tap is a tap and we can't change its length. So we simply clap on the first beat of the minim and stay silent for the second. Returning to the Good King Wenzel's last example given in the first lesson, we can now replace these points where we had crotchets followed by crotchet rests with minims. Clap along with me. Remember to clap for every crotchet you see, count two for every minim and stay silent for every crotchet rest. I'll give you a count of four and then we'll start. Ready? A one, two, three, four. Well done. There is of course a minimum rest, which means stay silent for two beats. It looks like this and sits atop the stave like this. Take a couple of seconds now to look at the first few bars of this exercise and we'll go after four. Ready? A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, three, one, two, three, one. Three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, four, one. So now we're getting comfortable with notes worth one and two beats. The next note value we're going to add is the quaver worth half a crotchet. For now, we'll keep them in pairs. When we see them in a score, we keep counting the crotchets, i.e. one, two, three, four, but the quavers we add in and after every note, one and two and three and four and. To give an example, we'll look at another Christmas classic, this time Ding Dong Merrily on High. And we'll show the counting underneath for now. Just watch this time as I demonstrate, I'll count four in. Ready? One, two, three, four. One, two, three and four and one, two. Four, one, two, three, four, one, three. Your turn, ready? One, two, three, four. Now we're going to practice reading pairs of quavers mixed in with crotchets and crotchet rests. Take a couple of seconds now to look at the first few bars of this exercise. After four, ready? A one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one, two, three and four. One and two and three, four. One, four and one and two, three and four. One and three and Three and four and one, two and three, four and one, two and three and four. Two and four and one and two and. A single quaver looks like this. A quaver rest looks like this. When you see a written quaver, quaver rest, then it sounds the same as a crotchet. So we don't tend to write that in drumming. We do, however, write this for which you would rest for the quaver and then count the and of that number. Take a couple of seconds now to look at the first few bars of the exercise after four. Ready? A one, two, three, four. If you didn't get that 100% right, then go back and try again. If you did, well done. We're now going to try an exercise containing all we've learnt so far. 
This final exercise practices everything covered in lessons one and two. Crotchets, minims, quavers, crotchet rests, minim rests and quaver rests. Remember to count in your head throughout the exercise, count two for every minim and minim rest, and to count and when you see the quavers and quaver rests. Take a couple of seconds now to look at the beginning of the exercise. Good luck, after four. A one, two, three, four. Well done. If you got all that right, then you're ready to progress to lesson three.